My name is Glenn Johnson. I'm a principal developer here at uh, SimBlocks. We are showing here our uh, capability to export CDB to Unreal. Uh, this is our Unreal export application at the moment. We have a CDB up of the Los Angeles area. At the moment, we're showing the process of actually selecting the CDB. Simply select the root CDB and then select View. At this point, we've already loaded our CDB, however, so uh, we're going to go ahead and go through the rest of the processes in order to export a, an area of CDB. The second part of the process is go to the Elevation tab, select the size of the export. Unreal accepts up to 8192 by 8192. In our case, we're going to select a 4033 by 4033, approximately 4K by 4K area. Uh, then we can interactively move in the view, select the point that we want to center our uh, export around, and uh, designate the, uh, the point. Uh, once we have done that, then on our build panel, we can see the uh, center location, along with the geographic coordinates, the UTM zone that uh, the data will be converted to. Next step in the process will be to select a uh, geo package output, which will house a temporary location uh, to store the uh, the raster information, both elevation and, uh, and images. Images will be built as a virtual tile set for Unreal, using Unreal's rules for uh, creating virtual textures. Uh, for this 4033 by 4033 in Los Angeles, that's going to be a 3 by 3 tile set, each, each image being 8192 by 8192. Once we have our area designated, size selected, and the output uh, geo package, it's simply a matter of uh, selecting uh, the build geo package. After our geo package export has completed, the next step will be to actually take that geo package and convert the rasters to inputs for DataSmith. The entire area that we have in the geo package will, um, will be exported um, to PNG format for rasters. We'll have DataSmith exports as well for all of the geotypical and geospecific models in the area that are covered. To specify the export, we click on the uh, DataSmith export selection tab. We created a directory underneath our uh, geo package directory. Uh, we're going to also verify that our CDB is still selected. You can uh, start and restart this as, as you want to, wish, want to. And then we hit the uh, bottom data smith export button on the build package to, uh, to start the export. Once the data smith export is complete and you've exited the uh, Unreal Exporter tool, uh, it's time to launch the Epic Game Engine. Uh, from your Epic Games launcher, just press the launch. It starts the Unreal Editor. And we will create a new project. Select the Architecture, Engineering, and Construction. Press Next. We need a project name. In this case, we'll just call this Downtown LA. Select Greek Project. Once the project is loaded, there are a couple of settings we want to adjust. Um, under Edit, go to Editor Preferences, and we recommend that under Loading and Saving, we're going to disable the Auto Save. Uh, otherwise, with large amounts of texture, sometimes the save actually uh, uses up uh, too much memory uh, to, and it happens right in the middle of, uh, of our, uh, our process. So we'll disable it. We'll save the uh, at the end. Next, under and this this is an absolute requirement that we need for these uh, landscape projects. Under project settings, go to rendering and enable virtual textures because uh, we've created a, a virtual texture for this one. Now, once we've done this, we must restart the engine. Once it is restarted with uh, correct options, uh, we're ready to do our DataSmith import. Bring up DataSmith. Come back 
and go to the uh, UDataSmith file that we created with the Unreal Explorer tool. In this system it's going to be this downtown LAU Datasmith file. Select Open. Okay, here, and then Import. Uh, this importation is going to run for a few minutes. We'll uh, pause our video while this runs, and then restart when uh, the import is complete. Once the import has completed, expect to watch the uh, system compile shaders for a few minutes. We suggest that you let this process complete before continuing to the next steps. Once the shader compilation has completed, uh, the next steps will be to fine-tune the uh, landscape elevation. Uh, to do this, go to the World Outliner and do a search for elevation. Type the first three letters, it'll come up, highlight it, and under details, you'll see the uh, elevation parameters themselves under the scale value for Z. For this particular case in Los Angeles, we'll enter 56. this is applied to the elevation, you'll see that the elevation drops down to where essentially the elevation meets the bottom of the buildings. Uh, that essentially by roaming around the area you can use to fine-tune uh, the elevation scale with any data set. Uh, the next step will be to import our virtual texture. Um, to do that, come here to import. Add this texture to the uh, Datasmith texture input. Uh, the virtual textures uh, do not seem to import correctly, so we're putting a separate step outside of the import to import this virtual texture. Since we have it, select open. Uh, the process will run through the, the importation of this texture. This will take uh, just a few minutes. We'll pause the video. texture for the, the landscape uh, and you, if you mouse over it you see that uh, it has it consists of actually all nine of the files that we uh, we highlighted and upon the size that you have and the resolutions these could be different important thing to remember here is that uh, this is a three by three matrix so it's three across so we'll need to know that to understand how to create the for this texture. To create the material, right click on the uh, texture and select create material. And uh, since we can imagery done on that, it's going to pop up uh, on the runs through this for a little bit. It's going to fill on this little line here shortly. Scale. 
letter this is 13 44 this is the number of samples in the uh, data set we chose 4033 by 4033 44k you can see that under the uh, resolution for elevation and we have three across so we divide that by three and we get the 13 34.333 once we've entered the scale drag the layer coordinates over to drive the UVs one other thing for a landscape we'll probably want a constant Constants are 0 to 1. We'll give it a value of 1. And then use this to drive roughness, which will keep the shininess factor down on the terrain to where it looks much more realistic. And save this material. materials we'll see that imagery mat is available as a material for selection selected and it'll take it a few minutes to apply to the entire terrain okay at this point uh, one other thing we may want to look at and that is any transparent textures in this case we have this particular tree texture here um, Alpha to the opacity map. navigating through our data set. Core components in this scene are editable with any of the, uh, the Unreal Editor tools. Um, we can look around and find something that needs changing. There are a few buildings in this particular Los Angeles data database that have construction that are uh, was not quite correct in our CDB, where we have a a hole in the roof of the structure that should be walled internally and uh, the scene we see here is an example of one of those. We can uh, use Shift F1 
select stop to get out of the play mode select the object itself uh, at this point we've got the, the sides of the object selected we can make uh, come down here and double click our material And under Material Properties, select Two-Sided. True. Save this. And we've modified our, our building that we imported. We can, of course, do anything else we want with the Unreal tools in the entire landscape and terrain.